I guess you're going to get excited about something. I also get excited about Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's so good to have you with us. I'm going to need you to get a microphone ready. I need uh, Brother Ken to get ready because we're, this is going to be a um, several Sunday teaching. Um, some of you know that I have spent years writing Bible studies. And uh, I have spent years compiling notes on apostasy. And I'm hoping to put it into a book eventually. My wife has been telling me years to write a book on this. And, um, I've, I've had it on my disc, you know, not disc, but the USB for years. And I finally found it. And I thought, you know, maybe this is a time to teach because I know we're in the middle of apostasy. But, I, you know, I also know this. Sometimes when a pastor teaches the congregation, he, he goes, like I do many times, I go quick trying to get everything in, and I, I don't want you to miss something, especially what we're about to talk about, because this is going to make all the difference in your life, um, how to identify false prophets and teachers. You're going to learn how to identify them. When you hear it, you're going to say, boom, that's not from God, or yes, that's from God, because false prophets and teachers do teach some truth. You know that, right? But they're eventually they're going to come around, and you're going to understand three things, three things. If you understand these three things, and they are the most important because that's right from God's word. These three words, we're going to teach them to you. You're going to understand if they don't teach these, if they're not pointing to the right Jesus, the right gospel, then you're being deceived by them. And of course, we know that we're living in the days of a deception. We're living in the days of apostasy. We talk about it all the time here. False prophets and teachers are everywhere. Jesus warned us. We're one day closer to home, amen? Before we um, get into today's teaching, and you have that microphone ready, brother? Yeah. Okay. Because we're, we're going to stop and take some questions. Now, once again, this is not going to be a w one Sunday. This is going to take several Sundays on this. I want you to learn. And I want our brothers and sisters who are not here to listen to this. If, um, obviously, you can go back and watch it on YouTube. Or you can watch it on our, our um, website. But what I'm about to share with you, a lot of scriptures, a lot of scriptures. And you're going to rightly divide the word truth. But the main thing, once again... 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. We go to this all the time because this is the purpose of God's word. All scripture. That's all scripture. That means the 66 books of the canon of scripture that you have known as the Holy Bible is given by the inspiration of God. All of it. None of it's by men. Men wrote it, but God inspired it, right? So it's God speaking to us. It's profitable for doctrine. That is the key. Doctrine means teaching. That you are taught truth. Sound doctrine. What does doctrine do? It reproves. It will rebuke you if you're in sin. Come on. And that's how you know you're a sinner. Yes. It will also correct you if you're in error. That's how you know if you're in false teaching or true teaching. It will bring you back into line. It gets you on the right road, the pathway uh, that Christ wants you on. And instruction in righteousness. That's the sanctification. Okay, we're going to talk about it. It's one of the key words. So that you as a man or woman of God may be perfected. Okay, equipped. Thoroughly furnished unto every good works. Would you stand for the reading of God's word? How many are hungry for the truth of God's word? And brother and sister, I can't tell you how important this is. I, I, words cannot express how important this teaching is. Are we, are we good? Okay. All right. We're going to look at these scriptures. And we, we looked at them last week. Now we're going to do a lot of repeating, but not just repeat to hear myself repeat, but to teach truth. Matthew 7 Verse 15, Jesus is speaking. He said, beware of false prophets and teachers who come to you in sheep's clothing. That means they're coming in the church. All right? But inwardly, they are ravenous wolves. Very important. But you will know them by their fruits. Notice Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. Yes. Jesus didn't say, you're going to have to really figure this out on your own. He says, you will know them by their fruits. And he meant that. But what does that mean? We're going to learn that. Then he says, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes, bushes or figs from thistles? Verse 17, Verse 17, even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. The message today is identifying the fruit of true and false prophets and teachers. Identifying the fruit. That's what we're going to learn. Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. This is guarding your faith against apostasy. Part 3, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask today that you would anoint these lips of clay, that everything that's said today in this, this message would help not only your children to know the truth, but Lord would help us to grow stronger in the faith. In a day that we see so much uh, corruption, so much uh, deception, that's not only come in the church, but Lord, it's just, it's on TV, it's everywhere, and it's literally leading a multitude away from you. 
There's a large segment of the church today that's not even saved. They claim to know you, but they're not saved because they have never been truly justified by faith. And therefore, Lord, we ask that you help us understand that we must believe the way you told us to believe if we're going to be saved. Now, Lord, today I ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would teach the truth to the people who are listening today, that they would understand it and that they would grow by it. And we ask today, Lord, as we expose these fruits of false prophets and teachers, that we also would understand that we are surrounded by them and that we must be careful who we listen to. Now, put your hand on your heart and say, Dear Jesus, speak to my heart this morning. Open my eyes to see and open my ears to hear. And dear Jesus, change my heart today. Amen. You may be seated. I want to start out by saying I've been on this subject of apostasy for several Sundays. Those of you who have been coming to Abundant Life Fellowship know we've been on this subject for many months. And the reason why I told you that the Lord several months ago showed this is a time to teach on this. We see what's going on in these woke churches and these churches that are allowing sin to come in. What's going on? And you're going to see those types of churches begin to target churches like ours, calling us a bunch of haters, a bunch of bigots, Nazis, all the above. You know, you hateful people because we won't go along with the transgender ideologies and the woke uh, ideologies, the LGBTQ plus and all the other, and, and, and even the ecumenicalism, because see, a lot of these uh, uh, churches are, are part of the ecumenical movement, saying it doesn't matter what God you believe in, doesn't matter what Jesus you, you uh, put your faith in, all roads lead to heaven. How many ever heard those things? Now, the person that's teaching this like no, like, uh, no one before is, is Pope Francis. Listen to what he's teaching. He's leading. And, and, and listen, please hear me, friends. This is it's a tragedy. Because we live in a world today that says all we want is peace. We want peace and joy. We, you know, because there's so many problems in our, in our society. And so all we want to do is get along. So if we're going to get along, we've got to tolerate each one another's you know, beliefs. And that's not what God's Word says. See, they're not going to tolerate your beliefs and mine. I guarantee it. They want us to tolerate theirs. And you need to understand that. You have to tolerate their ideologies and you have to say, okay, I'll agree with it. But the moment you say, thus saith the Lord and come right from God's word, they're going to stand up against you. You're a hater. You're a bigot. And this is why Jesus said in the last days, Christians will be hated for his namesake in all the world. And we're seeing it happen. We're seeing anti-Semitism come up again in America. It's, it's in a couple of high schools, these Islamic uh, what do they call them? A valedictorian gets up and they give their speech instead of saying thank you for that I got a good education and I got this award for being the top student. No, they point at Israel and attack Israel, attack the Jewish people. What, what's going on? The same spirit that has always worked against God's children, Israel and Christians, is rising up, okay? And brother and sister, this is so important to understand. I want to tell you some things before I get into this message. I love every one of you. I don't know some of you, but I love you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm, I don't care if you, I don't, see, it's not about me. I don't want you to come to Abundant Life Fellowship because Pastor Dave, I want you to come to Jesus and follow him. Amen. Amen. I'm not getting paid a dime more for what I'm teaching. And I don't want it. That's not about money. I, it's not about money. You're going to find out one of the main things false prophets and teachers do is they want a crowd. They want people to follow them all about money. And I'm not about that. I'm about one thing, that you come to Jesus and know him and follow him. Amen. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And that's why people sometimes get upset when I teach because oh, why do you have to say that? That sounds so hateful, but it's not hateful. It's truth. If you're living in sin, truth is going to sound hateful, but it's not. God is very loving. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at what we've learned. Now, I'm not going to cover everything. If I looked at everything we've learned over the past several Sundays, five Sundays we've been on this, I would be an hour just explaining what we learned. But the vital truth, the most important truth, that this is where we started with, because the Antichrist spirit is rising in the world, now get this, apostasy is what? Increasing worldwide. You see, apostasy is simply the falling away from the faith. We talked about that, right? It's the abandonment of faith. That means people are no longer enduring sound doctrine. They don't want to hear the truth. They go to church to be entertained. 
And because of that, no one is reaching the lost. Why do we have a bunch of people in America that are, that are living so wicked and corrupt? Because the church is no longer reaching the multitudes like it once did. Come on. You go back in the 1950s, right after World War II. Although our country has never been a perfect country, there's always been sinners, there's always been corruption in America, like every country in the world, it wasn't like it was, it is, it is today. You know, when TV came out in the, in the, in the 1950s, in the early, most homes didn't have TV. Think about this, didn't have TV until 1960s. My parents didn't have a TV until late 50s. And they had those old black and white metal boxes, you know, <laughs> Philco and Zenith and some of those, you know, and they cost a lot of money even back then. What did you have on television? Did you have the filth we have today? No. All the programs would clean. The news. You, how many remember? Uh, it used to be three news. ABC, CBS, and NBC. Walter Cronkite, CBS. You watch Walter Cronkite, you got the news. You got truth. Not anymore. Now it's corruption. It's a propaganda. All this. We have filth. W what's going on? Why do we have, you know, some, some cable companies have a, th a thousand channels of filth. There's very few good channels on there anymore. There are some good ones. I'm not, one of my favorite, I, I watch it all the time, is Me TV. I like watching The Rifleman. I even like watching Believe It to Beaver, if I can watch. Imagine that. Why do I watch that? Those old shows. Because they, it was funny and it had good, clean humor, right? I watch some of that. I, my wife and I watch uh, Turner Classic movies. Not all of them, because some of them are filthy. But we, we like the old movies, the old black and white, you know, um, Humphrey Bogart and, you know, those back in the day, the noir movies and all them, because they were clean, they had mystery and all that. But what I'm trying to say is, what happened? Why now, just 50 years later, 60 years later, do we have such filth? Because apostasy. You see, back in 1950, people go sit down, and if you try to show the filth that we have today, what would they do? They would say, I'm not watching that. They would call the, the, the network and say, shut that stuff off or else. Networks get their money from the who they advertise for. Right. And the companies that, 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 they, that they advertise for would have pulled their product. I'm not having my show on that filth. Right. Not anymore. The more filthy it is, the more they want, their, they want to advertise their products. Yes. See what's happening? Yes. We live in a, in a time of apostasy. We live in a time of corruption. We live in a time of absolute wickedness. And Jesus said this would happen. He said lawlessness would bound in the last days, right? Matthew chapter 24, read it. It's all right there, Matthew chapter 20, verse 9 through 12. Lawlessness would bound, the love of many would grow cold. False prophets and teachers would rise up and deceive many. It's right there. Paul said it was going to happen. 2 Timothy, what? Remember he said 2 Timothy chapter 3. Perilous times would come. So therefore, we have declining Christianity. It's being replaced with a false form of Christianity that has rejected Jesus Christ as Lord. Because if you can't follow Jesus Christ as Lord and be living willfully in sin, you get that? Therefore, there's a multitude of false professing Christians that will join the world's religions and will welcome and worship the Antichrist as God when he soon arrives. He's coming. I believe he's alive. I believe he's ready to come from behind the curtain of, uh, of um, end time events. He's going to come out. He's going to be accepted as the greatest thing in the world. Just like Hitler was uh, accepted as the greatest man ever by the German people, the Antichrist will be looked upon as a god. Imagine that. How does that happen? But the Bible clearly teaches us that in Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. Who is like the beast? And uh, those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will worship him as God. How does that happen? Apostasy. God gives them over to the deception. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Read it. 9, 10, 11, 12. It's right there. God gives them over to it. We are living in the days of apostasy. It's clearly taught. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 and 2. We live in a time of doctrine of, of devils and, that have come in the church. And, 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 and we have people that are falling for these lies. 2 Timothy chapter 4 three and four. How many know I'm talking about? All right, so apostasy is declining Christianity. That is what the whole premise of this teaching is. We're seeing true biblical Christianity fall. And we're seeing Laodicean Christianity rise. How many know the difference? How many have read about this, the, this, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, chapter two and chapter three? The last church mentioned is the church of Laodicea. Why? Because that's the church that will be on the earth when Christ returns. The church that's all about me, myself, and I. Lovers of pleasures, lovers of money, lovers of the world, lovers of sin rather than lovers of God. That's what the perilous times are all about. Amen? So 
Now, that's the problem. Here's the answer. We're, we're, I'm not going to talk about the problem. I'm going to talk about the answer. So here's the answer. How do we as Christians keep ourselves from falling away from Christ and joining the ranks of the apostates? Now, when I talk and say about falling away, this is a whole other teaching. If a person falls away from Christ, they were never saved. You understand that? All right? You understand that? Is this a little loud? Is it echoing in at all? You might want to turn it down just a tab, but not much. Now, this is a whole other teaching. I'll, if you don't make it, if you're not saved, it's not because God didn't want you saved. You didn't do what's right, and that is you didn't accept the truth. Amen. Because Jesus talked about, you know, the seeds. Only the one that bears fruit. Remember from Matthew chapter 13. So as believers in Christ, you're a believer today, right? As believers in Christ, we must learn how to guard our faith against apostasy by looking to God's holy word and learn how to stand strong in Christ daily. Now, this is clearly taught. Let me just review this real quick. These are only a few of the verses that say stand firm, stand fast, stay true to Christ. There are many, but 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 15, was Paul talked about the coming rapture. Remember what he said, Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hold to the traditions which you were taught. The traditions are the truth. Whether they be by word from the teachers like a Paul when he taught, when he would preach, or by epistle, which is, we know as the letters, right? And we have several epistles in the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, test all things. That's very important. Test everything. Even test what I'm saying today. Hold fast to what is good. What's that mean? Hold fast to what God's word says. How many know only God's word is good? Only God's word is true. Amen. There are many religious books. In my library, I have many false books. I have the Book of Mormon. I have all the Mormon books, the Pearl of Great Price. I have the Jehovah Witnesses Bible, the first one they came out with, and the last one they came out with. Why? Because they, they said this is the most perfect translation, and yet it still taught the Trinity. They had to change it. You have all these, these teachings, the Koran. I have a copy of that. These are re men's religious teachings. They are not the truth. Can I have an amen? amen? Only God's word is the truth. Only because only God's word is inspired by God. All these other teachings, although there may be some truth in them, they're not inspired by God. They're from man. And if you've got man's fingerprints on them, guess what else you have there? You have Satan's fingerprints. Because unregenerated man is going to teach falsely. All right? Amen? So we are to abstain from every form of evil. Here we go. So we dealt with question one several weeks ago, uh, how to guard your faith against apostasy. First one we talked about, I'm not going to go there. You go back and watch it a couple weeks. Who is the main perpetrator of apostasy? Satan, right? Satan's primary goal is to get you to fall away from Christ. He didn't, he didn't want you to ever come to believe in Christ, but now that you believe, he wants you to fall away. And he targets your mind, ready? He targets your mind through lies, right? That's how he gets you. He lies to us. And, of course, Peter talked about that, 2 Peter chapter 2, you know, beware of Satan, he comes as a roaring lion, seeking and may devour. That's, you can learn. Now, we're on question number two. This is the most important part. So, Satan is going to use false prophets and teachers. Satan is not going to be able to get you through an atheist who stands up and says, there is no God. You're not going to believe that. He, he, you know, if an atheist gets on TV and says, I'm going to explain today why... There is no such thing as, as God, and I'm going to explain the Big Bang Theory and all these other things in evolution. By the way, evolution is falling apart by the seams. How many know that? Ever since they found that DNA, man cannot, um, cannot evolve from a lower life form to a higher life form unless somebody manipulates his DNA. So the evolutionists are really struggling now because it's, it's just impossible. Okay? And that's why they never could find the missing link, and they're not going to because it's a lie of Satan, right? But if you get an evolutionist or an atheist that get up and talk, you're not going to sit there and listen to him say, I'm going to learn. No. But you might listen to a false prophet and teacher who comes to a church. Come on. You might sit at home and say, boy, this man sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And you may be lied to. Right? So question number two, as we look at our point number two, we must be beware of and recognize Satan's false prophets and teachers who promote teachings that lead to apostasy. And we're going to find out what those are. You're going to get baptized a little bit, sister, from those things dripping. Praise God. When, in this, these, when it gets hot like this, those, those, uh, they condense. So yeah, you might feel a little drip. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's just water dripping from the vents, okay? <laughs> All right. So God's Word warned us to beware of false prophets and teachers. How many times? Every book in the New Testament, except the book of Philemon, warns us of false prophets and teachers. Now, that's 26 books. And I think if God gives us that many warnings, we better pay attention. Amen? 
they would come right into the church who could deceive us away from Christ. And not only that, but God warned us not only to beware of them, but to truly understand that the closer we get to the coming of Jesus Christ, they're going to increase. That these false prophets and teachers would increase immensely in the last days. Why? Because of internet, because of TV, okay? I told you, if you go back 150 years ago, in order to hear a false prophet or teacher, you would have to go to his or her meetings. But not anymore. All you have to do is turn on TV, and there they are. Boom. Just turn on your, com your internet computer. There they are. And believe me, they're everywhere. I was watching one on Facebook the other day. Lie after lie after lie. And people say, oh, I just love this man. I just love this man. He makes me feel good. The anointing's all over him. I never heard one person say, oh, that man teaches right out of the Bible. No, it, he makes me feel good. That's the problem. Never go by how they make you feel. In fact, I will tell you this. A true man or woman of God is going to make you feel awful uncomfortable for a while. Until you get the truth in you. I remember the first time I heard the truth. Back in January 19, 19, 90, uh, 1977. Slipped in, into a church because I told you I wanted to see this girl. That's all I went to church for, see a girl. And uh, the pastor was preaching on hell. And he was preaching on who was saved and not saved. And I, uh, his words got a hold of my ears. And I was very uncomfortable in church that day. And like I said, I felt like he was pointing right at me, and he wasn't. He was standing up front. I was in the back, back pew, way back there, a lot farther back in this one. And the little old pews, and I was sliding down lower and lower because I knew he was, Holy Spirit was pointing directly at me. <laughs> Nothing he said in that sermon that day did I want to hear, but boy, did I need to hear it. And it didn't register for almost four more months when I got saved on May the 13th, 1977. But here's what I talked about last week. I gave you the warnings. How many times last week did I talk about Jesus warned us about beware of false prophets and teachers. Look at that warning up there. Put that warning up there. You got it, good. Jesus warned us over and over. Paul warned us over and over. Peter warned us over and over. Jude warned us over and over. John warned us over and over. Now what are we going to do with this? I'm going to ask some questions today. Who are the false prophets and teachers that Jesus, John, Peter, Paul, Jude are referring to? Do you know who they are? This is the problem. Most of the church has no clue. I don't want to know. I don't care. I just know they're out there, but I don't. you better beware. Why would anyone ignore our Lord's warning Beware of false prophets and teachers and yet not know who he's referring to. Come on. Let me put it in this way. If there was a serial killer in Ocala, Florida, and all, now we have like 10 or 15 people that are dead. Same person killing all these people. And what he does is he comes up to the door and he's dressed like a normal person and he rings the doorbell and as soon as you answer the door, he shoots you right between your eyes. And this has been going on for years. And the police can't catch him. But finally, he fails in killing someone. And they got a good description of him. And the police asked the individual who was almost killed, what did he look like? And they said, well, he was this height. He, he, he had this color hair. He looked like this. And they got a good description. Would you want to know what he looked like? Sure you would. Because you know that person could end up at your door. So why are we not concerned about what false prophets and teachers look like then? Because a serial killer may kill your physical body, but a false prophet and teacher will kill you spiritually. What's worse? I would rather die a thousand deaths shot between the eyes and still be saved and be fooled right into hell. Come on. Amen. Are you with me? These are just some of the verses that Bible warns us of false prophets in the last days. These are just some. Look at this. They're coming as wolves in sheep's clothing. And like I told you last week, if we were to study every verse, even in the Old Testament, it, you, you, you'd be all week. You'd have to, to, to rightly divide God's word and look at every verse and understand it. So God is very adamant because the Lord loves us. He doesn't want us to be fooled, right? Amen. Amen. All right? Praise God. Now, here's a warning about false prophets, and this is false prophets and teachers as well. False prophets and teachers have led multitudes to hell, and that is true. There are people in hell right now that are screaming out, why did I listen to that person? Why did I listen? Why didn't I turn away? Think about it. They are the blind leaders of the blind. Can you imagine those people in hell right now? I can't. I cannot imagine being in hell. 
and knowing that you can't get out, not in a zillion years. Why would God do that? Because you've rejected the truth. And this is why God warned us about him. He didn't warn us about him because, you know, if you listen to him, you may lose a few rewards in heaven. No, you're going to lose your eternal salvation. You will never be in heaven. That's why they are the blind leaders of the blind. They can be zealous, highly religious, and they can appear like special servants of God. I've been around them. They appear like they're anointed. They can prophesy. They can say, thus saith the Lord. And some of them are very good at reading your mail because they have an evil spirit in them, like Jim Jones. Remember Jim Jones? You remember what he did when he led 909 people to drink poison Kool-Aid? Do you know before that all happened, he appeared at a church. It's on video. We showed it here. He got up and literally prophesied over several of the women in the church and literally prophesied correctly. He was able to tell what their problem was, and they admitted, this is how Satan works. That's why you never go by prophecy. You must go by the word of God. Come on, are you getting it? This, this thus saith the Lord, prophecy is not of God anyway. Come on. The prophecy, oh, I have people say, you don't believe in prophecy, Pastor Dave? I believe in prophecy. It's found in God's word. I believe in end times prophecy, and if any prophecy is, comes from God's word, I'll accept it. If it's coming out of the mouth of someone, say, God told me to tell you, I shut it off immediately. Because if God's going to tell me something, I'm going to find it in his word. Come on. Are you with me today? So they, they look like they're doing some kind things. Usually they are very aggressive and they're outspoken, very charismatic. Only by their teaching, prophecies, actions, that's their fruit. We're going to look at those. Will you be able to identify them? And boy, this is so important. By the time I'm done with this, now it's not going to be on one Sunday. You're going to be able to identify them. You're going to have a checklist. Say, I'm listening to this guy and I notice what he just said. That's not from God. And like I said, not all false prophets and teachers are going to teach lies. Everything that comes out of the mouth, they're going to be truth that comes out. Remember, Satan loves to take a lot of truth, but then pour the lie in. It's like if I took this water little bottles of water, purified water, and then say I opened it up and I put two drops of strychnine in this. Would you drink it? It's 99% water. Why wouldn't you drink it? Because it's all poison once you get the false teaching in. You see what I mean? And please understand that. These guys that are on TV, many of them, they, they, they teach some things that are correct, but I will tell you, you're going to find out why are they false prophets and teachers. We've got three words you're going to learn. They're, they are, they're only by their teachings, prophecies, their actions, fruits, will you be able to identify them as extreme danger. If you don't know the biblical message, and that's what we're going to be teaching, what is the biblical message? What is the true gospel? Because Satan has a gospel too. It's called a different gospel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, if anyone comes preaching another gospel, regardless if it's from a man or an angel, let him be accursed, Right? If you don't know the biblical message, you are a potential easy prey and may be led to hell by them. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Are you with me? So now we're going to learn how to identify false prophets and teachers. And this is so important. Remember, we had three questions we answered. Now, before you put the answers up to Jody, I'm going to turn this microphone on and we'll see how much of you learn. Now, you don't have to give the answer. You don't have to speak up. But if you would like to, I'd like for you to do it. Last week, we started on this. We only answered two questions. The first two questions, to identify false prophets and teachers so we can avoid them and to guard our faith against apostasy, we must and answer these three questions. And by the way, this is how you learn. I've learned a long time ago how you learn God's word. Always ask questions. Why is God saying this? What the context is God saying in this? How does this refer to me? Because not everything in the Bible is written to us. Some of it's written for us, but not all of us. Like for instance, the law was not written to us. Come on, we don't abide by the law. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to, but think about it. There are things that are written specifically for Israel. Come on, right? All right. Now, when you get in the New Testament, the epistles, especially Paul's epistles, who are Paul is the apostle to the New Testament church. That's written to us. Now, all the Bible's written for us, but some things are specifically written to us. Amen. That means we have to abide by that truth. Amen. Are you with me so far? All God's word is important. All of it. Genesis through Revelation. All of it's important. So three questions from the warning that Jesus gave us in Matthew 7, 15 through 23. 
Question number one, in Matthew 7, 21, remember what Jesus said, that only those who do the will of my Father will be saved. Only those who do the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of God and be saved. Remember what Jesus said? Not any, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, but only those who do my Father's will. Here's the question. Don't put the answer up there. What is the will of God that we must do if we are going to be saved and not fall away into apostasy? What is the will of God? I talked about that last week. What is it? Anyone? You didn't forget already, did you? Come on. What is the will? Ken, you got it. The will of God is one, uh, one of them is uh, we need to be discipled in the word of God. All right, we can, we can be in disciple. What does that do? Bear fruit. There it is. Answer. God's word. Here it is. Answer. God's word clearly teaches the evidence of one who is truly saved. There will be godly repentance leading to a transformed behavior. All right. Proven by a continual growing of Holy Spirit fruit. All right. Fruit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Now, once again, look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. This is just one of many verses. You know this verse. How many times have we taught on it? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul writes, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? That you present or offer your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Holy. Holy, I mean sanctified. Acceptable to God, which is your what? Reasonable act of service. There it is, reasonable service. And, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. That means no longer. Don't be conformed to this world. No longer, but be what? Transformed. Where? Where? In your mind. That's the word of God's going to transform by the renewing your mind that you may what? Prove, and there it is, what the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. There it is. God's perfect, acceptable will is that we're being transformed. Pastor, and you can relate that to being disciple because... Can you turn it up a little bit, Red Mike? So we can pick it up. On. You, can, you can refer to that as being disciple because it's the discipline in your mind to the word of God. Okay. No. Right. I'm going to say that. You said what now? You can, what this scripture here is, for, is referring to uh, becoming a disciple because a disciple has, has, a, has a disciplined mind. Right, that's is it. That's what a disciple means. It means to be a disciplined follower of Christ. That's All right. part of the renewing process. Absolutely. Right? All right, thank you. That's right on. Let's look at the second question we answered. Then we're going to get into today's question. Number two, in Matthew 7, 22, Jesus said, Many who profess to be Christians and do good works will be shocked to know that he is going to turn them away and they are going to be cast in the lake of fire. All right? The question is, before you put the answer, why are many today who press to be Christians who do good works not saved? Hmm? All right? You're right. You, you, you're right on. You're right on the right track. They're, they're still living like the world. There it is. Here's the answer. Because their lives remain unchanged, and they live lawless. They live lawless. They, their Christianity is still about pleasing self and not by pleasing God. Regardless of their, of their so-called spiritual works, they're still all about pleasing self. Remember the final warning that Jesus gave Matthew 7, 23. Remember? Look at that. What did he say? Depart from me, you what? Practice what? Lawlessness. That's the key. They did many works. All right? They'll say to me on that day, day of judgment, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name cast out demons. In your name perform many miracles. He's referring to false prophets and teachers here. All right? And, and this also is referring to a lot of people in the church because lawlessness is the, is the problem. Did we not do many miracles in your name? And they're not real miracles. I'm finding out a lot of these are fabricated. We watched them. And we did a whole teaching on it. These false miracles, you know, that there's being done in these meetings. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Do you see that? In other words, this is so important because if you're going to understand the three words we're going to get to in a minute changes a lost sinner completely. And here it is. There is no continual obedience to the person who is a false Christian. They may obey Christ occasionally, but their heart is not to obey him. But often, these people will only use Jesus to get what they want. They go to meetings where I, I'm coming to Jesus to get prosperity, my best life now. It's all about me. I want Jesus to give me what I want. You know, it's and, and once again, it, it's only in America that these lies can be propagated. Think about it. Joel Olstein wrote a book called Your Best Life Now. And in that book, he talks about how God wants to bless you and give you everything you want. But then why is most of Christians in the world suffering? 
Why don't they have their best life now? Does God only care about American Christians? No. Because that is a lie. That book is a lie. It sold millions of copies. Yes. Because in America, what do we want? We have everything. We want more. Right? We can't just have one 50-inch TV. We want three of them. You know, think about it. We can't just have a house with four, three or four bedrooms. We want, you know, see, in America, the, the, we, we have been taught to be greedy. Come on, think about it. In other words, there's no obedience or desire to obey God's word, and that's what lawlessness means. It means I'll do what's right in my own eyes. I will do what I want, right? Yes. Pastor, and, and let me just stop. Could turn the white mane up for him, please. Can you help? Thank you. And that's why the red mic is not white mane. Thank you. Now we go. Okay. Pastor, the Here problem we go. with the modern church today, and you and I have talked about this before, is that the people don't, and I'm making disciples. There's no discipling of the new convert today, and that's what's seriously lacking in the church today, which is why we're seeing lawlessness in the church. That's the reason why people don't want to be taught the truth anymore. They don't come to church to be taught. They come to be entertained. See, to, to be discipled means you're ready to be taught and you're ready to follow Christ because you're not going to follow Christ unless you're a disciple. And that's what means to be, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He has to be Lord. Right? right. right? Does everybody understand that? Yeah. All right. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24 and 25. See, right after he said, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. He said, I liken this as, as such. He says, um, therefore, whoever hears these words of mine and what? does them, not believe them, I liken to a man, a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Right. right? The rains came down, the flood come, the winds blow, and what happened? What happened? What happened? The house did not fall. Because that man or that woman's life is built upon the truth of God's word. Amen? Are you with me today? Praise God. But Jesus said, oh, the, the person who hears these words of mine and doesn't do them, I liken to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. Sand represents, you know, rock represents Jesus, the truth of God's word, solid rock. Sand is man's manipulation of things. You can manipulate it. You can form it to fit what you want, see? It's like when you go to the beach, you can make a little sand castle, you know, but it's not going to stand. It's going to fall apart. And the rains came, the, uh, the flood rose, and the, and, the, and the winds blew, and what happens? The house fell. There's your apostasy. And great was his fall. Right? So it's very clear, and that's why Jesus uh, told us, beware of false prophets, because what they're going to do is they're going to cause you to build your whole Christian life upon sand, the, the things that please you, but not the things that please God. Are you with me so far? Amen? Praise God. So now, let's go on. Identifying false teachers. Matthew 7, verse 15. So now we're going to look at the final question. Now, this is going to take a few Sundays. Very important. That's why I'm going to let you guys ask questions. Normally, I don't do that during sermon time, but it's, I want you to learn. In Matthew 7, 15 through 23, Jesus told us that we can. He didn't say you might. He says you can identify both the true and false prophets and teachers by their fruit. Now, here we go. Before we put the answer, we're going to look at that. To identify false prophets and teachers, we will now look at clear description that Jesus gave us concerning false prophets and teachers. And this is found in Matthew 7, 15 through 23. Once again, you've got to look at the whole thing. Very important that you study God's word. Let me help you. As if you are a believer in Christ, always study God's word in context. Never take one verse and make a teaching out of it. Look at the verses before. Look at the verses behind it. All right? Amen? Please pay very close attention because everything that we're going to learn from here on out hinges on these verses. Here we go. Look at it again, Matthew 7, 15. By the way, before this, Jesus talked about the wide way that leadeth to destruction, the narrow way that leadeth to life. He says very few find it. Why is that? Because most are deciding to go the broad road because the broad road is doing it your way. The narrow gate, Jesus is the what? John 14, 6. The only way, the only truth, and the only life. Amen. All right? You get Jesus is Savior and Lord in that one. Beware of false prophets, and look what, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Very important you understand that. Sheep's clothing means they're coming in the church. They come in looking like Christians. They dress like Christians. They have Bibles, King James Bibles even. 
They come saying, I'm a Christian. I, I love Jesus. But inwardly, there's a key. Inwardly. Outwardly, they look like Christians. Inwardly, they are what? Ravenous wolves. Now, what does ravenous mean? Hungry. Hungry. They devour. What are they hungry for? You're going to find most of them are hungry for your money. They're hungry for, the, your, the, they're hungry for power. They're hungry for prestige. They want crowds. It's all about them. It's not about Jesus. You're going to learn a little later. When we look at the characteristics, a true man or woman of God points to Jesus. A true man or woman of God becomes more and more humble. He or she must decline so Jesus can increase. But a false prophet, a false teacher, is increasing. It's all about me. Listen to me. Thus saith the Lord. I'm going to prophesy over you. I've got the gifts. I've got the power. And they're going to do this all the time. Oh, they all refer to Jesus, but it's really all about them. Do you get it? Now, notice Jesus said ravenous wolves, not ravenous wolf. Why? Wolves run in packs. This is very important you understand this. You will find that these false prophets and teachers feed off each other. They will have each one another at their meetings. They will use each other's teachings. Come on. They're students of one another. Not students of God's word. They're students of their own false teachings. Now, Jesus said, now here it is. He, he changes the meaning a little bit, but he's still referring to false prophets and teachers. Verse 16. He says, you will know them by their fruits. He didn't say you might. He says you will. Now, this is important. If, if Jesus said we can know them by their fruits, then we can know them, right? This is why we have to understand it. But here's a key. He now begins to talk about the food that they offer. Back in Christ's day, if you were hungry and you wanted to get some food, you went to the vineyard. If you wanted grapes, you went to the vineyard. If you want figs, you go to the fig trees, right? So what was food for? You needed substance. You needed nourishment. This is speaking physically, but he's turning it over to the spiritual part. So if you're going to go to a, uh, to get spiritual food, you're going to go to a true man or woman of God that's going to tell you the truth, amen? But he says, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes? And the obvious answer to that is no, you wouldn't do that. What happens if you stick your hand in a thorn bush to get grapes? Yeah, you're going to get cut up. You're, it's going to do damage. Nor does you, you go to uh, get figs from thistles. So he's talking about substance. So now he says, now, if, because who you go to, you're going to know them by their fruits. Because in verse 17, he says, even so, every good tree bears what? Good fruit. Now, he's referring to the man or woman who's truly saved. The man or woman who's truly saved is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. They are teaching the truth of God's word. So when you go to them and you're saying, I need answers, they're going to give you the truth. Amen. All right. Every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree, that's the unsaved person. Now, I'm going to say this to you. You need to understand it. Every false prophet, every false teacher is not saved. Okay. Please I'm not talking about a person who's trying to teach Bible and, you know, they're just a brand new baby Christian. First of all, they shouldn't be doing that anyway. Come on. All right. When, you're, when I was a baby Christian, I, the pastor told me, he said, listen, you need to get into Bible study. Now, uh, did I witness to people? You better believe it. Could I tell them everything that was in God's word? No. I didn't even know the difference between Genesis and Revelation. I'm talking about a man or woman who gets up behind the sacred desk, the pulpit, and begins to teach. A false prophet is not saved. All right? Now, that doesn't mean also that a, a true man or woman of God can't teach error. All right? Do you understand that? For a season. For a season. Because why? Because the Holy Spirit indwells them. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? The Holy Spirit's going to lead you out of that. Now, I, I, Ken's got a great testimony. Ken, out of the Word of Faith movement. And he was dabbling in that. How many know what the Word of Faith movement is? Anybody know? Okay, you know, the, the prosperity gospel and all that. And that's why you need to learn. It, it, and they teach a different Jesus. They teach a different gospel. He finally realized he, what they were teaching is not from God. And he came out of it. Now he teaches Bible today, he, and that helps him now. Now he's more, he, he's more bold about the truth than he was before. So God can pull you out of these things. You can be in error for a season. Just like I know some people that were in, in Roman Catholicism. We got some here. You can come out of that. No, well, Romans are, uh, Roman Catholics are Christians, are they? Come on, give me a break. 
25 major false teachings. You can't be teaching Mary as co-redeemer and believe that you're saved. Come on. You can't believe, uh, say you've got to go to a priest to confess your sins. You, you don't baptize infants. Come on. These are things. And, I'm, and listen, I'm not saying Catholic can't be saved. I, my family's Catholic. I'm just saying they're going to start stop believing the nonsense and start believing the truth. Amen. I know a person that came out of the, uh, Mormonism. Was out big in Mormonism. Got saved. Turned away from it. Stopped. Started teaching truth over years. And he now stands up against the Mormon church. This is, God will use those people like that. Amen? All right? Because now they know the deception they're in. This is very important. So a good tree, now look what Jesus said, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Why is that? Well, it's like an orange tree. An orange tree cannot bear thistles. God made it to bear oranges. Right? And nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. You can't not make a thistle bush bear oranges or figs, come on, or grapes. So here we go. Now he says this. Look at verse 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What is Jesus saying here? He, he's talking about hell. Okay, cut down. There's coming a day that tree is going to die. Boom. Jesus said the same thing in John 15, 6. He said, if anyone does not abide in me... He is cast out as a branch and withered, and he does not bear fruit and is thrown in the fire. Verse 20, therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Amen? Once again, by their fruits you will know them. We're going to see what those are. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, verse 21, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at this now. Why does this follow up on the bad tree and good tree? Because what Jesus is about to tell us, he's given us an example. He's about ready to say, now listen, pay attention. Because... You're going to find out false prophets and teachers do a lot of what we call spiritual things. And they seem to be from the power of God. But it has nothing to do with it. Like I said, remember, uh, <clears throat> Jim Jones was able to prophesy. Was able to give words of knowledge, words of wisdom to the churches before he led his congregation down to Guyana and, 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 and told them to drink poison Kool-Aid and they did it. They followed that man right into the very hell he himself was, he was going. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, we already talked about that. What is the will? That we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That the, the Spirit of God is transforming us, okay? We already looked at that, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen? Now, here we go. Look at this, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, many false Christians, many false prophets, many false teachers, Lord, Lord, look at these now. Look at these three things they say. Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done many wonders in your name? The word wonders there is miracles, signs. What do you notice? What do you notice? Jesus says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who what? Read it with me. You who what? Practice lawlessness. Now listen. This is so important because a lot of these characters that are being followed have spectacular ministries. A few months ago, we had a guy come to um, Ocala, and I warned you, he's a false prophet. Uh, who was it? Um, yeah, who was it? Lance Wall now. Prophecy. Give prophecy. Do, come and, and receive your miracle. Re come receive deliverance. Come receive healing. This is the calling card of many false prophets. Come and get what you want. Not come and get what God wants you to have. Listen, I got news for you. Much as I, I want to see people healed, what good is it if you be, are healthy and end up going to hell? Come and, and, and receive a, a blessing. You know, if you need a job, I'm gonna, God's going to give you a job. What good is it if you're filthy rich and still lose your own soul and go to heaven? Or go to hell, come on, and not go to heaven. Are you with me? Are you picking up what Jesus is saying? So here it is. A person can have a spectacular ministry and call Jesus Lord and still go to hell because they did not do the will of God, which is walking in genuine repentance and living righteous by producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit out of obedient discipleship, Ken. Here it is. Now notice. Notice what is missing here. In Jesus' description of these false prophets and teachers, look what he says. There's no ministry of preaching and teaching truth. Jesus did not say, they, 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 they say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not preach repentance in your name? He didn't say that, did he? 
They didn't, Jesus did not say, Lord, Lord, didn't we not call people uh, to take up their cross and deny themselves daily and follow you? Did he say that? No. Did they say, Lord, Lord, did we not warn people of your judgment of hell that's coming, that we warned them in, to get saved? Did he say that? No. Instead, what we see here, their ministry was all to impress people to follow them. And this is what these... You need deliverance, I can give you deliverance. If you need a healing, I can give you healing. If you, if you need a prophecy, I can give you a prophecy. Do you see what I'm saying? Now you see kind of the, 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 the a picture of a false prophet. Their whole ministry is what? A show. It's a show. It's to entertain people. And this is the problem I see people that no, people don't want to go to church to be in, to educated. They want to go to church to be what? Entertained. If you need a miracle, if you need a healing, if you need a deliverance, I have the power of God. Thus saith the Lord, I'm going to give it to you. Now, we're going to go back and look at the, uh, the question three. We've got to get through this for about ten more minutes. Because everything we talk about is, is going to be on these two things here. In, in Matthew 7, 15 through 23, we just read that, right? Jesus told us that we can identify both the true and false prophets, the, true, the good tree and the bad tree, by their fruit. Now, what are the fruit we are to be examining on a continual basis? And by the way, how many of you do go to shopping and you just, when you go to get your apples, you just grab them up and throw them in the cart? I bet you, you look at them. You examine them. Your oranges. You make sure they're not bruised. There's nothing rotten. There's no worms in them. Come on. You, your watermelon, same way. You, you, you make sure the thing is not broke open. You know, you, you, you carefully examine it to make sure it's good, right? So, we are to continually examine the fruit. Now, to know these things. Now, here it is. We are to examine on a continual basis to know if who we are being taught by is a true or false prophet or teacher. Here it is. Number one, the fruit of their character. Number one, the fruit of their character. Do they exhibit a sanctified lifestyle of Holy Spirit fruit of righteousness or is their lifestyle a one of lawlessness? Now, when I say lawlessness, I'm talking about living for the things of this world. A true man or woman of God is not going to live for the things of the world. Nothing wrong with having a nice house or a nice car or nice clothing. I'm not saying that. Nothing wrong with that. But if that's what you live for, that's lawlessness. Are you with me? Right? We all work. We work hard and we want to have things. You know, nobody wants to live in a dump. I get that. But I, I also know there's some good men and women of God that live very meager. All right? Number two, the fruit of their teaching. Now here it is. Does their teaching lead people to Christ to be saved? And does their teaching call the saved to obey and follow Christ, producing a sanctified lifestyle of Holy Spirit fruit? Or does it lead people to seek Jesus to get things such as prosperity, blessings, producing a lifestyle of lawlessness? Listen, folks, we don't come to Jesus to get riches. We come to Jesus to get Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. In this life, you, you, you know, I get it. I pray for people to say, find a job. But I'll never tell people God's going to make you rich because that's not in the Bible. Once again, it doesn't work. It doesn't work in all the world. If you and I were in North Korea right now, we wouldn't be meeting like this. So imagine what those Christians are going through. And then Jesus loves them just as much as he loves you and I. So try to tell them they can have their best blessed life now. You can't. But you can tell them Jesus will save you. And Jesus will help you live for him in the worst of circumstances. Amen? Now here's a vital truth. I'm going to give you something you need to understand. You cannot identify a true or false prophet or teacher by these five standards. Right? Please don't do this. Number one, by how they look or dress. Okay? Because some of the, you, you, I've been around these false prophets and teachers who, who are, are dressed to the hilt. Wearing expensive clothing, wearing Rolex watches, wearing diamonds and jewelry. I've been around them. I, some of you know um, when I used to pastor in Mason City, Iowa, that I'd go to this church in Sioux City, Iowa, and they'd have some of these word of faith preachers like Jesse DePlanis. And believe me, Jesse, my suit, uh, his, his watch was worth more than my car. I'm not kidding you. All right. and then again, look how John the Baptist dressed. Remember him? Wore camel hair clothing, and, 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 and he probably didn't have the best of breath. He had bug breath. You know how many know that? Think about it. Some of you didn't know that. What's, what was John the Baptist's main, uh, main diet? Honey and locust. Okay, come on. 
Number two, never look at the size of their congregation. I've had people say, well, you know what? If they got a large crowd and come in their church, that means they're probably from God. It's the exact opposite. Come on, think about it. Think about it. Now, I'm not saying every pastor or preacher that has a large church is a, is a false prophet. No, there are some very good preachers that have large churches. Very good preachers. But most of these don't. All right, and you've got to remember what, what uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 3-4. The time will come when they will no longer endure what? Sound doctrine. But, remember, according to their own desires because they have itching ears. What? They, they will what? Heap up teachers, many teachers. And they will turn aside from the truth unto fables. And this is what we see happening today. Number three, how popular they are. How many books they've written? How many people follow them on social media? That has nothing to do with it. There are some good men and women are, that are being followed, and there's some false prophets that are being followed. You know, we talk about Kat Kerr, the pink-haired prophetess in this church. You know how many know she is? She's got tens of thousands of followers, and she is as false as false can be. That what comes out of that woman's mouth, there is no truth in her, yet she's got a following of many thousands. If they operate in the gifts of the Spirit or not, come on, be careful. What did Jesus say? Many will come to me that day and they say, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not what, done many miracles in your name? So none of that has counts. Are you getting it? Or number five, if they are part of a good Bible teaching denomination. You can have false prophets in good Bible teaching denominations. We just found out that this church down here in Orlando, First Baptist, what's going on? Anybody know? What are they doing? Please. Baptizing, uh, homosexuals. Baptizing homosexuals. They get their pastor, they're becoming woke. Please understand this. I, if I thought that one day that the Southern Baptist Convention was going to turn that way, I would have said, no way. But it's happening because we're, we're in the days of apostasy. So what are we to do? What do we do to protect ourselves? Here we go. First John 4, 1, about 10 more minutes. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out in the world. Many. Test the Spirit. What is the Spirit behind what is being said and the person, how they live? Come on, what is their motive? See, I, I'm going to say it again today. My motive is not for you to come to Abundant Life Fellowship. I mean, I'd love for you to come here, but I'm not going to be brokenhearted if you say, I don't want to come there. It's not. My whole motive is I want you to come to Jesus. That's it. I want you to come to Jesus. That's it. See, if, if, if you come here and hear me preach and then go away and forget me, that's no big deal. But if you forget about Jesus, that's a big deal. Come on. Are you with me? All right. So here we go. Let's go to the next one. Are we, are we good so far? So let's look at these two fruits. Are you with me? Which one do you want to eat? Which one up there you say, I'm going to grab a bunch of those and I'm going to start. All right. Come on. You got the good fruit on the left, you got the bad fruit on the right. Once again, look what Jesus said, Matthew 7, verse 17. Even so, every good tree bears what? Good fruit. good fruit. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Do you get that? So let's look at the good fruit very quick. We're going to stop on this one. We'll pick this up next Sunday. What is the good fruit? Now remember, we're looking at the lifestyle, and we're going to look at their teaching lifestyle and their teaching, right? So we look at the good fruit. Now, good fruit is always going to lead to this. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. You know this verse if you've been saved any time. But the fruit of the Spirit, read it with me. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Now this is, what is this? This is the characteristics of Jesus. This is what you're reading. This, what, when you see those words of those nine fruit, you see Jesus. Jesus is love. Jesus is joy. Jesus is peace. Jesus was long-suffering, kind, good, all that, right? Gentleness and self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, what does that mean? Against such there is no law. What this means is, now get this, it's very important, which means salvation by faith. Remember, our faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified is entirely a matter of God's purpose and it is His grace. Amen, right? We're saved by grace through faith. And it has nothing to do with us earning our salvation or by keeping some law or by doing some human works. But a person who is saved will begin to and continually produce these nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, how fast you produce them 
will be determined by how much you do something that we're going to read in a minute, okay? But every true believer in Christ, every saved person is going to begin to be transformed. You're, you're going to see these nine fruits growing over time, all right? And, and, and these nine fruits, now get this, we don't do these to gain our salvation. We do, these things are because we're saved, right? And I want you to never forget this, please. Good works is not the root of our salvation. It's the fruit of our salvation. All right? You're not saved by good works. Neither am I. But if we are saved and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to work in us. And this is why, look what Paul says in verse 24. He says, and those who are what? Christ. Those who are, belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. There it is. In other words, the truth is getting in the believer in Christ. And what does a believer do? Say, I want to live for Jesus. So what do you do? You crucify. Crucify is another word for repenting. Repenting of your fleshly works, your sinful actions, your desires. This does not please God. I want to stop it. So you work on it and work on it. The Holy Spirit gives you power. See, I, you and I can't change on our own. But the Holy Spirit in us can. All right? This is, he cleans you up. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. And it will not happen if you live to be 2,000 years old. But the more you are in Christ, the more you're going to be changed. One day you and I will be just like him. The word of God says in, in, in second, uh, uh, excuse me, 1 John 3, 2, you know, one day when we see him, right? When we see him, we shall be like him. Amen. All right? But not in this life. But as you look at this, also those who are not in Christ have not crucified their flesh. Those who are not saved will not repent of their sins, and they are not following Christ and obeying God's word, and they are not producing the Holy Spirit fruit. So are you getting a picture? No growing uh, a Holy Spirit fruit? Listen, any tree that does not produce Holy Spirit fruit is worthless. All right? It's like an orange tree. You have an orange tree, and it doesn't bear one orange. What good is it? All right? It's worthless. It's dead. Now, that's what Jesus said in John 15. Look at this again. I am the vine, you are the branches. Talking about the grapevine. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Now, what, what does it mean? We abide in him. We abide in his word. His word gets in us and it transforms our life. Jesus said, from apart from me, you can do nothing. He does the work. So, I want you to see this picture. If you go to the next one, I hope your life looks like this. That you are a good tree. That you have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, once again... Some of those fruits come harder. All right? For instance, probably the hardest fruit for all of us is long-suffering, which means patience. I don't have a lot of patience, but God's been working on me. You know what? And sometimes God sends people in our lives to teach us to be patient. Come on. Yeah, he does, because he wants us to learn. Amen? Sometimes it, these, some of these different fruits are a little harder grown, but you're seeing your life being transformed. Now, let's go back and look at this one, the bad fruit. The flesh. The opposite of Holy Spirit fruit is living according to the flesh. Everyone lives according to the flesh until they're saved. Come on. Come on. If you're not saved, you're in one or another, you're going to start, you're just going to live a life that pleases self. That's what it means. The flesh means I do what pleases me. That's lawlessness. Righteousness means I do what's right in God's eyes. That produces Holy Spirit fruit. Lawlessness means I do what's right in my own eyes which means I go, I do whatever I feel like doing, I'm going to do. All right, I'm just going to live the way I want. And here it is. Matthew 7, verse 17 and 18. Let's look again. But a bad tree bears bad fruit automatically. And verse 18, nor can a bad uh, tree bear good fruit. The opposite of Holy Spirit fruit, which is righteousness, I said, is, is the rotten fruit of lawlessness. Do you get that? Now, this is clearly spelled out. Please hear me. This is clearly spelled out in many passages in the Bible, but you know what I'm finding? Try finding that on, uh, uh, preached by these false prophets, teachers. You're not going to hear it. They ignore it. You will never hear what I'm about to give you taught. In fact, if you Google a certain false prophet and teacher and say, I want to hear what this man or this woman's teaching about uh, the, the, the works of the flesh, very rarely will you hear them teach on it. You know why? Because it's too negative. They, they don't see the, their followers want only the positive things. But these things we must look at. Let us look at a couple of verses. Uh, even some of these churches today, modern churches, are deliberately ignoring these, are they not? 
They're ignoring these, and I'm going to show you one that they're ignoring. In fact, we just found out that um, artificial intelligence is now being used to write the Bible, to rewrite it. It came on the news. It's going to completely take out all verses that are offensive to people. And when that happens, listen, let me tell you something. Those of us who love the King James Bible, or even any good translation, we're the ones that are going to be the haters. I'm telling you, please listen to me. Go along with the new translation that takes out everything that's offensive, and that way everything's acceptable. Yeah, go ahead and do that, and you've already completely spit all over God's word. And you have given God, you know what? Told God to take a hike. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to preach out of the truth of God's word. Look at this. Here we go. Just a few more minutes, and we're going to stop. Galatians 5, 19 and 20. Now look what Paul says. Now the works of the flesh are what? Read it with me. Evident. We shouldn't even have to even have this discussion, Paul says, but I'm going to show it to you. Which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, unclean thoughts, sexual thoughts, impure thoughts, lewdness. Lewdness here, it means crude, offensive sexual acts, including homosexuality. It also includes things like drag queens, lewdness, and the like. Idolatry. Oh, we don't have any idolatry in America, do we? Every day, I, these people that run to these baseball games, they worship their baseball players, they worship their football players, they worship their basketball players. You know, they go bonkers over, they buy their jerseys, they wear their jerseys. They'll, they'll spend tens of thousands of dollars every year to go to the games, but they won't put 10 cents into an offering plate. Come on. Do you see what I'm going on? All right. Sorcery, and by the way, sorcery also means drug addictions, drug, drug abuse, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions. Look what the next one says. Read it with me. Heresies. Every false prophet teaches heresy. Verse 21, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries. By the way, revelries means living, in the, uh, uh, going out and, and having these lively, noisy, drunken uh, acts. It also means orgies, okay? And it goes on, and the like. Paul says, and the like. Paul's saying, do you know there are other wicked acts I can mention, but you know what I'm talking about. Now look what he says next. Which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in times past, that, that those who practice such things will what? Read it with me, everyone. Not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, what's going on? That's lawlessness. They're not being changed. Why? Because they're not saved. You see, you can't change unless you're truly saved. Now, Paul even makes it more clear in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the what? The kingdom of God. He says it again. Do not be deceived. And I'm saying this to you today, and maybe someone is watching. You've been deceived by these, these new modern-day preachers that are telling you that it's okay to be homosexual. And I've seen what they've taught. They say David and Jonathan were homosexuals. They loved each other. Perverting God's word. That Naomi and Ruth were a lesbian. Are you kidding me? This is how deceptive and evil and wickedness has come into church by these false teachers. Because they're trying to shove this LGBTQ plus and they keep adding letters, the alphabet people, they keep shoving it down our throat and it's wicked. Please understand this. It angers me because they are literally defying and they're literally degrading God's word. Come on. Do not be deceived. Paul makes it clear. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. We know what they are, but look what he says next. Nor what? Read it with me. Nor what? That's in God's word. Nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. Why is that in there? Because the, the word, Greek word for homosexual includes lesbianism. Sodomites includes male homosexuals. Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, again, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's the bad news. Because in all reality, I agree, every one of you in here was one time like that. Maybe you weren't a homosexual, but I guarantee we were living like that. Come on. Either say amen or ouch. Come on. But that's the bad news. But there's good news. Amen. Look at verse 11. Here it is. But such were what? There it is. But such were some of you. Yes, I was there. I'm in that list. But such were some of you. But what happened? Huh? But you're now saved. You're no longer practicing these evil acts. And why not? Why not? Because the Holy Spirit resides in you. 
and you don't want to do this anymore. You don't have a desire to do it. You see what I mean? You see where we're going with this? Oh boy, it's going to become clearer and clearer next week. But let me finish up and we're going to pray. Paul explains what's going on in the next sentence. But you were what? Washed. When? Washed by what? The blood of Jesus Christ when you come to know Jesus Savior and also by the washing of the water of the word. The water of the word is washing you. Therefore you are what? Read with me. Sanctified and you are what? Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There it is. So we're, we're going to look at these words. This is the three things that are most important that will help you identify true and false prophets is what do they say about justification? What do they say about sanctification? And what do they say about glorification? Right. Now these are important. These are vital. You're going to find out that every one of these false prophets and teachers, every one, do not teach a proper justification. Right. They teach a different Jesus. They do not talk about the cross. They talk about Jesus paying for our sins in hell or some other way. And their sanctification means, hey, you know what their sanctification is for them? Having faith enough to receive whatever you want from God. But the Bible says, look at this, Hebrews 12, 14. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now we're going to stop here. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Is that true or is God jesting? Is our Lord just throwing out some words or does he mean it? He means it. Well, wait a minute, Pastor. I can't be holy. I'm... No, you're not going to be perfectly holy, but you desire to be. Holiness does not mean you walk around with a big halo and you glow. Holiness means that you love the Lord so much that you separate yourself from this world. See, holy means to be set apart. You set yourself apart to God. You love Him. See, before I got saved in 1977, I lived for the world. Some of you know that I lived went to rock concerts like every, because my dad owned a bar, I got tickets to every rock concert. There wasn't one 70s group I didn't see. I partied, did drugs, did mostly alcohol. I didn't like using drugs, but occasionally I would just to get along with somebody. But I would get drunk, party, do whatever. That was my life. Even when I started dating my wife, I was only interested in one thing. But then the Lord got a hold of my heart. And I'll tell you what got me. When that preacher, I started with this, and I'm going to end with this, talked about hell. Hell's real. God doesn't want anybody to go there. He didn't create it for us. He created it for Satan and all the fallen angels. But because we are eternal beings, eternal spirits, if we die without Christ, there's only one place for us to go. There is no purgatory. There is only heaven and there's hell. Those who have been justified through faith in Jesus Christ and are in right standing with God are going to be with Christ in heaven. Those who are not justified will spend eternity in hell. That changed my outlook. I knew when I got saved, I was headed to hell and I could have easily died many times. I talk about it and I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but many times driving home in a 1970 Boss 302 Mustang they had a lot of power, not remember driving home, passing out in the, my parents' driveway, waking up in the morning, hungover. Imagine, God saved me from being killed. Friend, I'm going to tell you, before we go any further to identify false prophets and teachers, remember, you'll either be justified by faith and you're being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, or you're not. Amen, Brother Ken? Okay. But, you know, um, what, what would you, well, let me just read the scripture, okay? Okay. Uh, what, I'm going to ask you the question, what is the sin of the modern church? The sin of the modern church today is preaching a different gospel and not calling people to repentance. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Well, let me tell you what the Apostle Paul said, and he, he agrees with this. In 2 Corinthians 11, uh, beginning with verse 2, the Apostle Paul writes, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you into one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, mm -hmm. so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. But if he who comes preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, 
or have received another spirit, or if you receive another spirit, or you have, which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might bear mm -hmm. well. Bear put up with, with it. Mm -hmm. That's the sin of the modern church. We bear well. We well. Right. We bear with these people that come in these churches right. and preaching all this garbage. Right, and I agree 100 percent. Now listen, I'm going to tell. We're going to pick this up next week. I'm going to give you those three words: justification, sanctification, glorification. Now, then we're going to talk about the fruit of the true man and woman of God compared to the fruit of the false man and woman of God. Okay, you're going to find that every false prophet and false teacher is is going to do something that's going to be of this world. They say they're Christians, but they live for this world. They're not being separated. They're not being sanctified. That's why some of these doctrines that are being taught, how many heard the prosperity gospel? Just a, one more minute. That is not from God because the world wants prosperity. Get it? Yes. All right? Even the most sinful man or woman wants more money. Jesus didn't come to give you more money. My Bible says God will meet your need, not give you what you want. But see, this is why people run to these churches that talk about these things because they say, if you do A, B, C, and D, God will make you rich or God will do this. And these are the ones that are making all the money. Look at me. I'm making all this money now because God blessed me. Well, you know why? Because you're lying to the people taking their money. I have seen people in this movement. They're no more better off today financially than they were 20 years ago, but the man or woman they've been listened to, yeah. Remember, they come as ravenous wolves. They won't exploit you. So we're going to look at this next week. Now, we come this far. Now, do you understand... We can understand what the, the fruit of the false prophet teaches, all right? And we will learn together, amen? amen? This is not a race. We're not going to run through this. I want you to learn. I want you to be able to say, I now identify them. You've got to make up your mind. It's either they're false or they're true. There's no such thing as maybe. With God, it's either black or white. It's yes or no. There is no gray areas. There is no maybes, amen? With every head bowed and every eye closed, please. I'm... I'm, I might be speaking to someone who's watching this morning, and I cannot tell you how important this is. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Just one more minute, please. Because this may be your last day on earth. You, today may be your last day. You may end up dying. And if you do, you are either going to be ushered directly into the presence of the Lord, or you're going to be ushered into a horrible place. It's one or the other. The good news is Jesus Christ suffered on the cross for your sins and mine. He took your place. He wants you to accept him by faith. That's how you are born again. You simply say, Lord, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I see that you suffered on the cross, that you love me enough, that you took my place, and you endured God's wrath, God's punishment for me. Lord, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against a thrice holy God. Forgive me. Wash me. Please give me eternal life. And I will follow you. Help me to walk in the Spirit from this day forth that I may bear Holy Spirit fruit and glorify you with my life. In Jesus' name. And if you do that out of an act of faith, the Lord will honor that. Amen? Praise God. Are you glad? Who here is saved this morning? Raise your hand. Praise God. Make sure you're witnessing to your family and friends. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Amen. All right. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you for being here. All the men, please, all our men come down. Come down to the front. All right. Yeah. All, hey, I shouldn't have to ask, okay? <laughs> men, women. That's all we teach about in this church. Men, women, okay? No, no in-betweens. How do you know the devil? <laughs> Um, yeah.